Hello everyone, welcome back to this course on discrete mathematics and today we are going to look at algorithms part 1. Well, I hope you are in the first year or second year of your computer science and engineering course or other courses, but still you are in the initial stage of your career in, in sense that you are in the initial stage of your university life. Basically, you are still uh, working out on how to come up with these different algorithms or you might have heard the word algorithm itself. Uh, in fact, if you are belong to the computer science and engineering, you would uh, study in depth about different algorithms. In fact, you will have a class, in fact, two classes I guess on the algorithms alone and uh, other related classes that are related to those algorithms including the graph theory and so on. But today we are going to look at some of the very basic algorithms that are available and before that let us define what is an algorithm and what does it does uh, or as a programmer what are the things that you have to remember while uh, thinking about an algorithm. An algorithm is a finite set of precise instructions for performing a computation or for solving a problem as it is a finite piece of precise instruction, exact instructions that you are giving for performing a computation process. A program is one type of algorithm, whatever program that you write, you are giving a specific instructions clearly, so that you are expecting something to be computed. All programs are algorithm, not all algorithms are programs. And, uh, it is something like if you ask a directions to somebody's house, it is kind of an algorithm. Just imagine that you are in a busy bustling city and you are looking for a certain house or say even certain cafe and so you are asking someone and they are giving you the direction like clear precise instruction is given to you. They are giving okay, go straight until you see the yellow color lamp post and there you turn right and after turning right just walk 50 meters you will find a jewelry store and just opposite to the jewelry store you will find a small lane that goes straight and once you enter the lane just walk 100 meters there you find a cafe and the house that you are looking for is just above this cafe. Is it a clear precise instruction? Mostly it depends upon the place in fact, uh, how busy that place is, but mostly this instructions that I just gave as an example is, it has all the things for you to achieve to go to that house. Yes, direction to somebody's house is something like an algorithm. The same thing is what we try to write as a program and feed it to the computer to perform a specific task. Yeah, recipe for cooking a cake is an algorithm. Well, you can think about any recipe uh, for cooking a cake or for cooking a spaghetti for example. Whatever that is, yeah, you have a process. Say for example, a spaghetti or whatever it is. Maybe you have a clear instruction, take the tomato, boil it, peel its skin, stir the tomatoes and then add some salt to it, add some pepper or some chili sauce. In fact, after 5 minutes you have to cook this. All specific instructions that are given to you is something like an algorithm and if you follow the specific instruction, your task is completed or in other words, uh, your goal is achieved by cooking the cake or spaghetti. Well, let us uh, see uh, this kind of information. Even the steps to compute a cosine of 90 degree is an algorithm. Some algorithms are harder than others. Some algorithms are quite easy like finding the largest or smallest value in the list, finding the specific value in the list and uh, 
some algorithms something even sorting the list is harder it depends upon how big that is as well as how complex it is finding the shortest path between Miami and Seattle uh, some algorithms are essentially impossible like uh, factoring large composite number so let us look at this information the maximum element given a list how do we find the maximum element in the list so to express uh, we will use the pseudo codes pseudo codes are something like uh, programming language but not really so because it can be used for any programming language if you are working out with java c++ c even python yeah this is kind of a base code that you can apply to this syntax that you are following for a specific language the algorithms for finding the maximum element in the list that is what we are going to look at. So, here is a simple algorithm procedure is given to us that uh, maximum value that you have to choose from uh, a 1 a 2 till a n integers and uh, you have this uh, a loop for loop for i equals 2 to n if if uh, maximum is less than a i then maximum is equal to a i. So, with this maximum element is what we are looking at. We will see with this uh, simple example you will try to understand the whole concept. Say for example, this is the list of integers that you have and you are asked to find the maximum element in this integer and we are naming it as a 1, a 2, a 3 till a 10 and uh, which means that of course, initially a 1 that is 4 that is a, a 1 is 4 for us initially and we are going to try to check with this loop here for i equals 2 to n. So, i is 2 here and uh, i of 2 is if max is less than a i. So, we are going to i of 3 now, i of 3 is 7 again if this is less than a i, yeah it is. In fact, uh, if you go and see in if initially, initially what we had is that a i is 4 and then a i we had a 2 as 1, 1 is less than 4, so there is no change, but 7 is greater than 4. So, we are changing the maximum value to 7. If you notice here, this is where we are making the changes to the max value. Yeah. So, when i equal to 3, it has been changes, changed. Then you are going to check for i is 4, which is a 4 is 0. Still, there is no change there. Max is not less than a i. And again, now it is 5, yeah, a 5 is not uh, greater than 7 and a 6, a 7, uh, i 7 that is a 7 that is in fact it is greater. So, you have a change there, maximum value has been changed to 9 now. In fact, you go through the whole loop and see other comparing other values is not it simple here. So, i 10 also we are checking there that is it. So, your maximum value that you have in this given list is 9. Is not it simple algorithm? Yeah, it is quite simple and straightforward I could say and in fact, you found the maximum element in the given list. How does the run time how long does it take to run? If the list has n element, the worst case scenario is it takes n steps. If it has 100 elements, it has to go through the 100 steps. Yes, so that is the time complexity of that algorithm. Let us look at some of the properties of the algorithms. As far as property is concerned, we always have an input. What the algorithm takes in as input? what algorithm produces an output or to be defined. 
and we need to be specific on what is needed and definiteness the steps are defined precisely you have to do it once you do not or if you miss out something say for example you are not precisely defining it in fact your output would be different and uh, that is not what you expected correctness should produce the correct output yeah your output should be correctness correct output and fitness or uh, finiteness the steps required should be finite it should not go into the infinite loop the effectiveness each step must able to perform a finite amount of time we want the complexity should be very less the time complexity centrality the algorithm should be applicable to all problems of similar form so we have seen a simple example in which uh, we are to find the maximum element in a given array so that was only having 10 elements but if the elements are 1000 10000 1 million can it have the same effect well that is a question to think about right so that is a that is something like generality searching algorithm given a list find a specific element in the list so there are two different types like linear search or sequential search then comes the binary search so as far as the linear search is con concerned we are to find a specific element in the list so the list does not have to be sorted for example you have a linear search for from the list of integers a to n and uh, you are having this file loop while while loop where uh, when i is less than or equal to n and x is not equal to ai we say i equals i plus 1 so you are going to the next element and you are checking if i is less than or equal to n then you are giving the locations else the location is 0 let us see this whole stuff by means of an example so you would be able for you to understand so we have the same algorithm here uh, just the if function if i is less than or equal to n then the location equals i that has been uh, kind of overlap let us look here let us say x is uh, 3 which means that we have to find 3 from this list let me quickly uh, tell you what is in the list we have 4 1 7 0 5 2 9 3 6 8 so this is the list and you are looking for 3 right so step 1 you have a 1 to a 10 all the elements are given in the array so i equals 1 that is the first location which is 4 and you are looking at the similarity x and ai are they same x is 3 and you are looking at ai that is a1 is 4 they are not the same so you are going to i2 which is a2 that is 1 and again you are looking for the similarity they are not same again go to i3 that is 7 and you are checking x and I, ai that is uh, x and x is 3 3 and 7 they are not same go on 4x4 4, 4, 0 and 7 uh, 0 and 3 they are not same i5 5, 5 and 3 they are not same again i6 2 and 3 they are not same i7 9 and 3 they are not same i8 we got x and ai are same if it is same which means that we have found the location in which the element is you know, so you have you have the location there now i8 and then that is it you can exit the program so that is a simple way or in other words it is a kind of linear search in which you are trying to find an element in the list that is quite straightforward is not it let us move on and see whether it works for other cases here is a list and uh, my x is 11 here again i am going to have i from a i is 1 to 10 let us start with 1 uh, we have 4 4 is not equal to 11 so we are going to the loop again and 1 is not equal to 11 then 7 is not equal to 11 so when a 
I 4 is 4, I mean it is I 4, A 4 is 0, again it is not equal to 11. So, we are going through this whole pace and when I is 7, A 7 is 9 and it is not equal to 11, that is x. The given x is 11 and we are looking at whether 11 is in the given list of elements. Well, we have gone through all the parts of the given integers, but we could not find the number 11 in it. In fact, we could not able to find it, which means that the element is not in the list, that is what we have to report it. If it is in the list, we have found the find it and just show where it is located. If it is not in the list, just let it be, that is it. Else is location 0, which means that uh, it is not in the list. Coming to the linear search running time, again the question is about how long does it take? Well, we know that it takes n number of steps to find the element. If the list has n elements, the worst case scenario would be it takes n steps, especially if the element that you are looking at is located at the last part, then it takes n step. If it is located at the first part, maybe it takes just one or two steps as it goes on. The first element is the number that you are looking at, then just one step, but the worst case is n steps. Let us go for this binary search, uh, given a specific element in the list, uh, list must be sorted each time it iterates through and it cuts into half. So, that is the binary, it cuts into half uh, binary values uh, and then it has to go for left side and right side kind of search interval. So, we have this procedure for the binary search, we have the list of elements first A1 to An, then you have I and J, the two branches left and the right, uh, while I is less than J, we are going to start this loop and with the M is the point in the middle, we have the M as the middle and then left and right that has been coming out of that and if X is greater than A M, then I is A M plus 1, else J is equal to M. So, with this thought, we are going to see if we can make it, if uh, x is equal to ai, if it is, uh, then the location you are going to report the location, if you find the x equals ai. Let us uh, see this example as well. So, initially you are looking at this number 14 and uh, you have the locations like a1 till a10 and uh, your m is going to, your i is, in fact we start from i equals 1 onwards, but this is a binary search, because it is a binary search, uh, we have two elements left and right. So, i is uh, on this side, left side and j is on the right side, that is uh, in this part j is 10 and uh, i is 1, that is where we begin. And uh, while we also say that m is nothing but i plus j by 2 and you have the floor there, so m is going to be 5, so that is the m. And uh, if x is greater than a m, if x given x is greater than a m, then i equals m plus 1. We can see here, is x is greater than a m? Yeah, there x is 14, right? Since x is 14, we have to shift i equals m plus 1. x is 14 and x is definitely greater than 10, uh, because a phi is 10. So, we are going to shift from to a 6, that is m plus 1. Okay, now, we are going to solve from there. Again, we are going to look at it. So, that is going to be uh, 6 plus uh, 10, that is 16 by 2, which is 8. So, m is going to be 8. In that case, you are going to see if uh, a 8 is greater than I mean x is 14, x is 14 is 14 greater than a m, that is what you are going to look at and if greater than a m, we are going to uh, go on ahead with uh, adding 
i equal to m plus 1, but here it is not greater than m. So, you are going to shift j. So, j equals m. So, we have come up to this point and again this one i and j, i and j is scrutinized as uh, they are going to add 8 plus 6 by 2 that is 14 and uh, 8 plus 6 by 2 is that is 7. So, m equals 7. So, that is where we are here right now is the x greater than a m. In fact, uh, they are equal and uh, we are going to check this out that comes out to be there 12 and it points us to be the a 7 that is 14. So, both i n 7 finally, comes to this point of 14 that is what we are looking at. So, if the location if x equals a i that is 14 then location equals i. So, location is 7 there 7 is the location for us. So, that is how we do this binary search try to uh, do it again and see what are the steps involved in this. It is a very simple step to follow and here is another thing we are to search for x equals 15 and you, ha you have the list of integers given here. You go through the same process we have this i and you have j then you have to find uh, i plus j by 2 that is again the similar procedure you are going to follow through. In fact, uh, you can see we have a similar uh, given numbers there, but you are asked to find whether x equals 15 is there or not. In fact, if you go through the whole thing you will you are going to take the steps and you find that there is no location which has 16. So, therefore, your output is going to be location 0. Yes, uh, the binary search is this uh, is a somewhat alternate view of what binary search does. There are a lot of different ways to do that because uh, it does not give a efficient way, but when compared to other searches like linear search uh, this seems to work better. And how long does it takes? The worst case if it is 8 element it takes 3 steps, if it is 16 element it takes 4 steps, if it has 64 element it takes 6 steps. Yeah, if it has n elements, it had, it takes log base two n step. So it's far better than the linear search that we have seen earlier, but still it has its own limitation as a binary search. And we are going to look at a couple of uh, sorting algorithm that can be useful for numerical and lexical graphic ordering, and that's called a bubble sort and insertion sort. As the word bubble implies. Uh, it is like as if uh, when you have the water bubbles it goes out right. A uh, same thought can be used here for bubble sorting because you are going to shift the elements one after another once you see that an element that you are looking forward uh, in order to sort an ascending order or descending order based on that uh, you are going to move the elements or you take successive elements and bubble them up the list yeah it is as bubbling up. So, this is a simple procedure where you have a 1 to a n is given to you and you have a couple of for loops in which i and j are given with the i equals 1 to n minus 1 and j is 1 to n minus 1. If a j is greater than a j plus 1 then you are going to interchange the element if it is greater. So, let us see the simple uh, way in which it works. Uh, we have this outer loop of n minus 1 iterations and inner loop with n iterations. So, n minus 1 iterations the first time, n minus 2 iterations the second time and so on. That is how it goes till 1 iteration at the last minute. So, this is how the procedure works out. Uh, we have total of uh, n minus 1 uh, plus n minus 2 plus n minus 3 and these are the things that uh, gives us to be n square minus 1 by so, we can say that uh, it is about n square times. So, that is the bubble sort algorithm and if you want to look at a simple way in which it works you can take uh, for instance 
the numbers uh, say for example, you have numbers listed like uh, 5, 3, 4, 2, 8, 9 and if you try to sort one at a time, you can interchange the elements whenever that element is of uh, the limit. So, when I say of the limit, it means that uh, if suppose uh, phi is greater than an element, then you can go ahead. For example, you have this list for example, let us say 3, 5, 4, 8, 7, 2, 9 and if your objective is to order it by means of the ascending order like say 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9. If this is your ob objective, then in fact, you can do step by step one at a time, we can move on with it. So, for example, when you compare this two initially, there is no change in the first step and then your the next step you are going to compare uh, this two, 5 and 4. In fact, there, there would be a change. Likewise, you are going to go one at a time and uh, you are going to sort everything together. Let us look at this insertion sort, this is another inefficient uh, algorithm to say. It starts with the list with one element and inserts new element in their proper places. So, it is like uh, we have a given set of a 1 till a n elements are given to us and then you have this for j equals 2 to n and we are going to begin with uh, i equals 1 while a j is greater than a i. If a j is greater than a i, then you are going to this while loop and where we are telling that i equals i plus 1 and you have this m equals a j. Then you are having this for loop for which k equals 0 to j minus i minus 1. There you are going to see the equality operation a j minus k equals a j minus k minus 1 and a 1 is a i is m and you are trying to sort them together. So, this is actually the place where you are interchanging this, this part, the array element that is a j minus k and a j minus k minus 1 is interchanged. Take the success element in the list, find where the element should be in the sorted list, try to find that one out and move all elements in the sorted position of the list that are greater than the current element up to 1, up to 1 you can do that sorting process. So, that is a simple insertion short. So, I will give some more notes on this couple of algorithms that we have seen today and I will give you some examples when you look at those notes you will find some examples of uh, these bubble sort as well as the insertion sort. In fact, we have seen couple of uh, simple algorithms today and these algorithms uh, go a long way as you develop as a programmers and I hope these uh, algorithms are quite useful for you to build up uh, complex ones in the future and uh, we still have a uh, couple of thoughts on these algorithms which I would be discussing in the next lecture. So, I am looking forward again to see you in the next next part and until then have a good time and see you goodbye.